yeah. Hey, how's it going? It's Colin Daniel here from RiffNinja.com. And today is a lesson on the one finger blues for you beginners, okay? And uh, we're going to use just one finger and it's going to be your first finger. And uh, just for those of you that really don't know it all, um, if your palm's facing you um, from left to right, you don't count your thumb, although I use my thumb. Don't tell anybody because that's cheating. Um, I count one, two, three, and four fingers. Remember, thumb doesn't count, okay? First, second, third, and fourth, all right? Now, the strings are from the thinnest string to the thickest string. That means from the highest string to the lowest string. You've got first string, second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, and sixth string, okay? Sixth string is your thickest. First string is your thinnest. Thinnest string, smallest number. Thickest string, biggest number. All right. The frets are these funny little metal things that go across the neck of your guitar that you put your hand on. And when I say first fret or second fret or whatever, what that means is that you're actually playing behind the fret. So if I say second fret, it's one, two, there's a second fret, and my finger plays behind that, okay? And you should be more or less in the center. It's not, not always practical. I don't want to get too deep in it because you won't have to worry too much about this lesson. It's just to kickstart you. So now we're going to do something bluesy. We're going to play what I call a cheater chord or power chord. It's not really a true chord. It's a two-note harmony. And the correct musical term for two-note harmony is interval. But you'll hear lots of other terms for it. I'm not going to get into that either. It's a two note harmony, that should be enough for you to grab onto. We're gonna need three changes, three complete changes. An A change, a D change, and an E change. We are in the key of A, and it's A blues, which is a minor bass key. I'm not gonna go any further with that either. Just put that in the back of the old Rolodex here and uh, remember it for later. Now, the first two strings we're gonna use are the fifth string and the fourth string. The fifth string, the open string, which is any string that isn't fretted with your finger, the open string is the root. The string underneath it is your harmony. That's why this is mistaken a lot of times as a chord, because it does sound really chordal. And this is what you're gonna do with it. You're gonna play the two strings together at the same time. You can pick them individually. You can start up and then down, down and then up. You can go up, down, up, down, up when you're... But it's not a real strum. Like I don't want you to do this because you're going to strike other strings you don't want to strike. You need a, a, a bit of a shorter throw and it's a, if you watch my right hand it's a bit of a movement. I'm actually bracing my hand with my pinky on the face of the guitar here and that helps me as far as so that I only make a short throw with my pick it's kind of a little bit of a circular or down up motion right today you're going to be just using a, a down motion and I, I have a habit of sitting my edge of my right palm up against the strings to control the string sound and as you watch me play you'll see me using this right hand to mute the strings I don't want to ring out. Another way to do, deal with that is that with your first finger here, you'll notice that it looks like my finger's touching the other strings underneath it, and, and it is touching the other strings underneath it. It's to mute it so they don't ring out. I don't want those strings to ring out. I only want the fifth and fourth string together. And I want it to sound like this. Now there's a rhythm that we need for the three changes. I'll go through the three changes first and then I'll go to the rhythm. So that's my A change. And you can practice getting familiar with it by going down up. You know, getting a nice even strum. You don't want to hit just the bass note without the other harmony underneath it being sounded out with it. That's what makes it sound like a chord, right? So that's good practice. Now once you get the A, this is the A change, we need a D change. We're going to use the open D string 
plus the fretted third string on the second fret with our first finger. Uh, another word of caution here is you could use any finger you wanted for this particular um, lesson, but I prefer you to use your first because this is a series of three lessons. And if you want to take the next step, you need to get in the habit of using your first finger. So the D change is the open D, which is the fourth string, and fretted on the third string, second fret with your first finger. The same kind of rhythm thing where you, now you don't want to touch the sixth or the fifth string, you want to just strike the fourth and third string. Get a nice even sound out of it. Again, we're going to be using down picks, but you can practice a down up pick too. Okay, we need one more change, the E. Open sixth string and fret it at the fifth string, second fret. Same trick with this. You don't want to hit any of your other strings. You want just the sixth and fifth string. This is our E change. Okay, once you got that, we're gonna put it together. What's the most common chord progression in blues? 12 bar. And it's not limited to just blues, but we're going to cover 12 bar because it's really easy. And it's a good place to start. Okay, first word of advice is if you don't have a very good memory and you struggle with stuff like this, get out a piece of paper right now. Uh, stop the vid, get out a piece of paper, and we'll call out the changes for you so that, and you can just write them however way you like so you can relate to it on a piece of paper. Here's the deal. It's a 12 bar, which means 12 four beat counts. To create a bar, and this is where the strum comes in, we're, to create this blues bar, we're gonna do what I call a shuffle. Um, they've got all kinds of names for it. A shuffle is really what they call a dotted eighth. I won't get too complicated about that. It's one long and one short. It sounds like this. And it's counted. And it helps if you count out loud if you don't get this. One, a two, a three, a four. One, a two, a three, a four. Now here's the deal. I'm doing a down up stroke. You could do them all down. One, a two, a three, a four. One, a two, a three, a four, which will probably be easy for you. Your choice on that one. I'll give you one example and I'll leave you with that. Um, I'll do them all downs, okay? And here's the deal. It's one long, one short. One, a two, a three, a four. So the a ah is a 16th note just before the next beat. And it still belongs in the beat before the next one. But it fools everybody because it's tucked right in before the next beat. So that's the kind of what you gotta get your head wrapped around. One, a two, a three, a four. A one, a two, a three, a four. That's two bars, right? So for each bar, we're going to have eight notes. One a uh, is the first beat. Two a uh, is the second beat. Three a uh, is the fourth beat, or the third beat, and four a uh, is the fourth beat. So you have two notes per beat, eight notes all together. So now for the twelve bar formula. You got your pen? Good. You got your paper? Good. All right, we're gonna go for four bars of the A change, okay? So, so you're gonna to have to count four counts of four bars. You're gonna count four times like this. One, a two, a three, a four, a. Four times. Then we're gonna to change to the D change. And it's gonna go for two bars, two four counts. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. Okay, then we're gonna go back to the A for two, two bars, two four counts. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. Now there's a few different things that happen in different 12 bars at this point. This is bar number nine because we've already done eight bars, remember? We've done four bars of the A, two bars of the D, two bars of the A. Now we're gonna to go to the E change 
and I'm going to ask you to do two bars of the E like this. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. And then we, for the last two bars, we go back to the A. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. That concludes your 12 bar. Now that you've got that, you want to put it together and try and make them more seamless. And here's my example. You ready? One, two, you know what to do. Here we go. One, a two, a three, a four, a 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 change, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a change, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a change, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a change, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. And we're done. That's the first 12 bars. To get a full song, the average song is, you know, between 70 and 80 bars. That means you'd have to do the 12 bar like seven or eight times through to cover your verses and choruses. Hopefully this keeps you out of trouble for a little while. And if you like this type of lesson and you want more, um, you can always subscribe. Uh, I do have two more lessons following this. So if you get this down properly, uh, you'll have an easy time getting to the next one. All right. Good luck and good fun. See you later.